Apple announcing a new multi-billion dollar deal with Broadcom to develop 5G and wireless connectivity components. Broadcom stock jumping on that news is trading near all-time highs. Joining us now with his top picks in the sector, Angelo Zeno, senior equity analyst at CFRA Research. Angelo, great to have you with us. Does this remove one of the biggest uncertainties that had been hanging over Broadcom, and that is that Apple might have replaced Broadcom uh, by 2025? I think so. I'm I think it's definitely a positive in terms of improving the visibility for Broadcom here over the next couple of years. Um, definitely was an overhang and, and, a, and a concern of ours, to be honest with you. I think at this point in time, the other kind of uncertainty as far as Broadcom is concerned for investors is clearly the pending acquisition of VMware. And I think all eyes kind of shift to that now here over the next couple of months. Angela, I wanted to get your take on what happened with uh, Micron earlier with the ban uh, from China and whether or not other chip makers, if that is incorporated in the valuation, should there be a discount embedded in some of these chip makers that rely heavily on China, like a Qualcomm, for instance? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think as far as kind of the ecosystem for some is concerned and their exposure on, on the, the China side of things and even the, on the Taiwan side of things, which is really, you know, in our view, kind of the bigger concern out there for the semi industry is, uh, you know, I think you kind of have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. As far as kind of where some of the areas that are most exposed to potentially getting hurt from some of the, the moves on China's side of things, memory clearly at the top of that list because of some of the, the, um, the moves that they've made in terms of ramping up their local memory uh, industry on that side of things. So it was easier for them to attack Micron in our view in many respects. I think it's a much harder from the perspective of some of the leading edge manufacturers the NVIDIA is the AMDs of the world, but nonetheless, um, that's where the risk comes into play, at least from what um, the U.S. can kind of do from that perspective and more restrictions. So, yes, I think there should be some sort of discount place on some of these names, but we're also talking about a lot of these chip names kind of being at the bottom cycle here, the growth potential kind of, um, you know, significant upside here going into the second half of the year. So I think you kind of have to, um, you know, properly kind of look at those two factors. So significant upside going to the second half. What is the, I mean, the traditionally si chips have been extremely cyclical and, you know, according to economists, it looks like we're headed into a recession, Angelo, or that's the consensus at this point, some sort of recession, whether it be a, you know, a soft one or a mild one or whatever you want to, however you want to characterize it. Yeah. That doesn't seem like that would be the backdrop for chips to go higher. Well, I think you also have to put it into context in the fact that a lot of these chip names have kind of essentially been in a recession for the last, you know, 12 to, to 15 months in many respects, especially if you're kind of looking at it on the consumer side of things, right? So um, you kind of look at names like an NVIDIA on their gaming side of things. They've seen a crash on the, on the gaming side of north of 50% from peak to Look at some of the memory side, memory names out there looking at uh, revenue levels down north of 50% from peak levels at their lowest levels from 2016. So a number of these names and areas of the, se the semiconductor industry are actually experiencing their worst downturn currently since the financial crisis and are actually significantly kind of under shipping true end demand. So even if we undergo kind of a recession here over the next six to nine months, I think a lot of that is kind of baked into these stocks and clearly the market is telling you that to, to a large extent. We should mention, by the way, that you raised your uh, price target on Broadcom to 750 from 680.